Um, I would ask you to stand one last time before we go to the Word. We're going to place ourselves before the Lord. We'll ask Him to lead us, to speak to us. Mm. Father God, we thank you so much that you are here and and that you want uh, to speak to us, that you have something you want to share to all of us. We thank you for your grace, for the ability for us to hear what you have to say, and we, what we want is to hear the voice of the Spirit. For those that are online, Father, I pray that you would also speak to them. And for all of us, Lord, we want to be disciples of your word. We want to take a hold of truth that are found in your word because we want to see you grow in us. Uh, we, we don't want to live in the status quo, in the status quo mode. Uh, we want you to bring us deeper and further in you. So may you have your way uh, this, uh, this morning, Father. May, and also may you help me to communicate what you've placed on my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may have a seat. Grab a seat. Well, there you go. It starts well. So we've been talking on heroes, um, men and women of God, and we'll be touching heroes for the summer. And uh, it's amazing when you look at the Bible how the Bible has an honest view and honest look at, at men and women of faith and, the, women of, and, and wo- the men and women of God that you find in the Bible. Uh, you, you find uh, these men being normal like us. Uh, walking in their humanity. We see them have success and we see them obey. We see them, uh, we see God you work through their lives, but we also see the, uh, the, the, uh, the struggles they face, the failures, uh, the bad decision. And all this is to teach us, all this is to inspire us to, to uh, do uh, what they did when it comes to the will of God and also learn from their mistakes, right? So, so that's why we are having this, we're doing this through the summer. One of the reasons, too, is we can, uh, so that we can look at the Bible, learn from the Bible, because when you look at these men, you also have the chance to go through the Bible because their story is written in, in the Bible. So, so what I'd like to focus, uh, who I would like to focus on uh, this morning, it's the story of Jonah. And uh, he was a prophet in Israel. So his mandate as a prophet in Israel was to bring the oracles of the Lord, to bring the people to a place of repentance if they were walking in sin, and also bring a, a solution. God never brings, um, never brings a message of repentance without talking about restoration. Every time that God brings a, a correction or an oracle that came to bring correction or discipline, God always brought hope, Right? And this is how our God functions. He gives us direction, especially when we look at the Old Testament. He brought the people to a place of decision. And and if the people repented or turned to God, what he did, he restored them. So when you look at the Old Testament, sometimes people look at the Old Testament and they say, oh, it's just uh, judging God. He looks like he's always angry. It's not true. Because every time that God wants to bring correction, it's for the good of the Israelites. And, And at the same time, when he does that, he always gives a way out. Always. And so, so when you look at the story of Jonah, is that there was a city called Nineveh. Uh, the population was around 120 people. And some will say that there were, they were probably 600 because a 120 could only talk about man. But let's say we'll stop at 120. So there was a, this town of 120, and the, it was uh, located on the Tigra River, and that is in North Iraq, in the Mesopotamia. Potamia between the Tigris and the Euphrates, and um, so there was a city that was there, and they were known to for their wickedness. And uh, God had compassion over the city, and He wanted to send Jonah to go and preach the good news to them, a message of repentance. He wanted to go to tell the uh, Ninevites that judgment was coming and that they were called to repent. So that was the mandate. And what we know about um, Jonah is that he ran away, right? So if you have your Bible, take a look at Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Just to give you a little snapshot of the, of the story of, of Jonah. We'll read 1 to 3. It says, The Lord gave this message to Jonah, Son of Amite, get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgments against it, because I have seen how wicked its people are. In verse 3, but Jonah got up and went on the, in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. 
So you see the story, here goes, it says that he ran away. And if we continue to read the story, we would see that this God, the Lord, permitted a storm to hit the boat where he's, he was on, and, and, the, and the sailors panicked, panicked, and what they did is they threw their cargo out, and then they start to say, why is this happening? And Jonah said, it's because I'm living in dis- disobedience, I'm running away from the Lord, and these great guys with a lot of compassion threw him overboard. <laughs> so then he found himself in water trying to swim, and I don't know if it was a swimmer or not, but we know that there's a fish or a whale. Uh, it says a big fish swallowed him, and he was stuck in the belly of the fish for three days. And if you look at the story, where, how it continues in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, From inside of the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God. He said, In my distress, I called to the Lord, and he answered me from the depth of the, great, the grave. I called for his help, and he listened to my cry. Beautiful story of repentance here, right? He turns to the Lord. He says, God, come and forgive me. Come and restore me. And in verse 9, he says, But I will offer sacrifices to you with songs of praise, and I will fulfill all my vows, for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. So he realized that only God can save him, especially when you're in the belly of the fish, right? Only God can save him. And then the Lord ordered the fish to spit Jonah out onto the beach, and then he went to Nineveh. And when he went to Nineveh, we probably, we can imagine that he was quite white because of the uh, acid, the stomach acid of the fish, right? There's a good chance that if we, there's a good chance that after three days being in the belly of the fish, uh, you would be quite white. You would probably have no hair. That wouldn't be a problem for me, but... (laughs) There would be, you would probably have no hair and you would be quite white and when people would see you, they would notice you. So, so he goes to Nineveh and he preaches the message that he was called to do and, or preach and what happened is the multitude or the city turned to the Lord, the king repented, the whole city repented. What a great story, right? So if you look at this story, well, some people will say, well, it's, it's a myth. It's not really a, a real story. Well, Jesus validated this story in Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. He compares himself to Jonah when it comes to his death. So he validates the story, sharing and, 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 and saying that this story is real. So, so when we look at the story of, of Jonah, it's not a myth. It's not just a beautiful story, a fable. It's really something that happened. And, and I believe that we can learn from Jonah. So let's say that Jonah would leave. If, you look at, if we look quickly at Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, we won't spend a lot of time on this, but we did uh, a bit earlier on in the series, it says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the, the, the race marked for us. So we talked about that we all have a, a marked race, right? We all have a race. We were all ordained by God. We all have a calling. And God placed us here with purpose and significance. First, to love us, because he wanted to, he made us so we can have a relationship with him, but also to walk with us, right? That's amazing. Can you tell your neighbor that God wants to walk with you? He wants to walk with you, right? He wants to walk with us. His desire is to have relationship, but also his desire is for us to fulfill our mandate and our calling, that we were all made with purpose and significance, that none of us were here just to lose, uh, to waste time and just coast and, and wait for retirement and die. God made a plan for us to fulfill. That's what it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, that God made us with purpose and significance. So the thing is, we, we need to know that, and, and Jonah received that call, and the the thing is, when you look at these heroes, they are, it says in, in, in here that they are there to encourage us. The picture that we see in Hebrew chapter 12 is this, uh, this stadium, and all these heroes are there, and they're cheering us on. And they're saying to us, as we read the story, and as we let Holy Spirit enlighten us when we read the Bible, they're there to say to us, continue your race, don't give up, persevere, uh, see their example, follow their example, learn from their mistakes, so that we can finish our race, right? And that's what we want. So if Jonah would leave the bleachers and run with us for a little while on this path of life, what would he say to you? There's two things I believe he would say to us. There are probably more, but this is what I came to, two things. The first thing he would say to us is that God is a forgiving God. He would say that. He would come to us and he would run beside us and say, God is so forgiving, it's unreal. It's beyond your imagination. When you look at the Assyrian people, the Ninevites, how evil they were and how wicked they were and how God had mercy over them, what a great story 
of compassion, how God was compassionate, how God was full of love, full of love for a lost people. And I think he would say that to us. And he would also say to us, hey, God has had compassion over me. I was disobedient, I was rebellious, and God gave me a second chance. God is the God of second chances, right? And one of the big battles that we face is guilt and condemnation. Because like we, like we, we, we know that we have holes and we know that we struggle and we know that we do fail. And because of that, sometimes we disqualify ourselves and we want to quit and we believe that there's no hope for us. But the reality is God is a forgiving God. That when we come before him and we acknowledge our hearts and, and we acknowledge our sins and we acknowledge uh, the, the wickedness of our, of our hearts, he comes and he restores us. So I believe that Jonah would walk beside us and run beside us and say, hey, um, God is a God of forgiveness. The second thing I believe that, God, uh, that Jonah would say to us is having hard issues will cause you not to be you. Having hard issues will cause you not to be you. Have you ever done stuff or said some stuff and you say, that's not me. That's not me. Well, I, I think we all have, right? And when you look at Jonah, the, the, the story of Jonah, he's a prophet in Israel. That's his calling, right? He's a prophet in Israel. And his calling, it's to go and, and speak the oracles of the Lord, like I said earlier. And it's to trigger a desire for the people to repent. And that's what his calling is. That's what he's supposed to do. But he doesn't. Instead, he runs away. And, and the thing is, when I have heart issues, listen to this. When I have heart issues, it will influence my destination. And because he had heart issues, and one of the issues he had is that he had something against Nineveh. He had bitterness, frustration, unforgiveness, um, unresolved issues in his heart. And because of the unresolved issues and because of his forgiveness, so I don't know exactly what happened when it comes to Nineveh and him, but the thing is he knew that the Ninevites were a cruel people and he thought they did not deserve God's mercy and he ran away from God. And the reason be that he did that is because he had heart issues. And I believe that when we carry heart issues, when we take offense, hmm, when we walk in unforgiveness, when we when we take records of wrong and we write that the, on the tablet of our heart and we harden our hearts, it will affect the way we do life. And sometimes we think that we can have all this inside and it won't affect the way you live your life. It will. It definitely did for Samson, for, Samson, for Jonah. Second go, third, third go uh, uh, in, 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 in Jonah's life. So it's important for us not to get caught by unresolved issues and by, by, by hurts or by frustration and resentment and see this hold us back from what God has in store. So Jonah's heart condition caused him to run away. That's the first thing that happened. The, con the, the, the conclusion or what happened when he let things come in his heart, it caused him to run away. That's one of the things that we do when we're hurt, right? Is we have a tendency of running away. We have a tendency of avoiding. We have a tendency of just walking away and, and not wanting to deal with the issue. It's to go to cross the road and walk on a different sidewalk, right? And, and we all have that challenge, or we all have uh, that, uh, uh, that, that pos it's possible for us to live that way. And that's what Jonah did. What he did is that he ran away from God. He ran away from his calling because he had something in his heart that it, he should have not carried. So, so, so you look at what will cause you to run away, to leave your faith or, or to break your marriage or, or to walk away from your ministry. One of the reasons that will cause you to do that is when you have heart issues, when you have undealt issues in your heart. It makes you do weird stuff. It really does, right? When you have uh, heart issues and you live in unforgiveness or you have resentment and you meet some people that you have something against, you act weird, right? Or you see people act weird around you and, and maybe and sometimes it's because they have art issues. But when you have art issues, it, you're not yourself anymore. You're, you're not, you, you do stuff that you would not do. You say stuff that you would not say because you got another influence in your life. And that is the hurt that you carry inside of you. Like, I, I like what it says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Do not be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
So if I'm drunk with wine, I will, ha- I will be under the influence of alcohol, and it will control my life, right? If I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I will be under the influence of the Holy Spirit, and that also will control my life, and that's a good thing. But if I have hurts and I have unresolved issue, that will also control my life. That will also dictate the direction of my life. It will play a big role in where I'm going to go. And that's what happened to Jonah. He had heart, a heart issue against the Ninevites, and it caused him to run away. So that's the first thing that you see when it comes to his heart condition. Secondly, his heart condition caused Jonah to give up. To give up. Three times he wants to die. He asks God to die. You know, when you have heart issues, it puts a lot of pressure. It's, 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 it's tiring to carry heart issues, right? Right? It's tiring, man. It, it sucks your energy. It, it's, you, you go in a work environment and you have tension in relationships. It, it's so tiring, right? It's not the work that tires you, it's the atmosphere, it's the climate because there's some tension. So when there's unresolved issues in your heart and you live life with unresolved issues and unforgiveness, you know, it's heavy. It's, it's, it's not fun. It consumes you. It's really hard work. It's emotionally draining. So, so what happened with him is he wanted to quit. Like he felt, he knew God's calling. Listen, he, he saw he knew that God called him to go to Nineveh, but he had unresolved issue, and there was this tension between the two, right? This tension, and this is why he was just tired. And sometimes that's what happens in our marriage. That's what happens in relationship in church or workplace. We have heart issues, and because of this heart issue, we want to quit. We want to throw the towel. The thing is, it's not about throwing the towel. It's not about quitting. It's about letting God heal your heart and restore you. Like, listen to this too. Like, Jonah had a privilege of being part of the greatest revival of history. It was a great revival. It was a huge revival. 120 people were called to return to, the, to, to faith or turn to the Lord. And because of his heart issue, and I think this is huge, because of his heart issue, he said no to it. It's unreal, right, when you think about it. Missing out on what God has had in store for him because of a heart issue. I believe that God has a destination for me, and he has a destination for you. God has a plan. God has a Nineveh for you that he wants you to influence, have an impact, or, or bring, a, bring, a, bring something positive to, to, to maybe your family, your workplace. God has a plan for you. But you don't want to see heart issues steal away the calling that God has placed on your life. And for Jonah, that's what happened. So in this tension, he wanted to give up. So we don't want to give up. The other thing that you see when it comes to his heart condition is that because of his heart condition, Jonah lost sight of the big picture. He lost sight of the big picture. He focused on the minor instead of the major. It's like being in a relationship, you focus on an event and you forget the big picture. So the thing is, he got caught up with with a heart issue He was struggling with something in his heart regarding Nineveh, and he missed out that this 120,000 people were called to experience revival. And sometimes what happens, that's, sometimes what happens in our lives is that we get caught by the small events and we forget the big picture. Sometimes I hear churches that are fighting on little things, you know, the choice of song, uh, type of worship, and they fight regarding that topic, and they forget that there's a world that is dying and there's a world that's going to hell. And they lose focus of their mission because they focus on their wants and their needs and they focus on their heart issue and they forget that this world is in need of help and they get caught and, and they get caught in that thing and they, they fight and they miss out on their calling and I think that's demonic. I think that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants me to focus on my heart issues, on my hurts, on, the, on my needs not met, and whatever it might be, that causes me not to live my eyes up and see, see the field. So again, like I said earlier, he had this great mission in front of him, this great calling. Uh, the Saul was prepared. God had prepared the Ninevites for his message, but he said no because of a heart issue. Lost focus of the big picture. Wow, eh? Unreal when you think about it, right? 
Last picture of the lost souls. Miss out on God's priority. What happened is his heart condition spoke louder than God's voice. Does it happen to you sometime where your heart condition speaks louder than God's voice? Like even though he was a prophet in Israel, even though that was his calling, he said no, or he was saying no to God's voice and ran away because of his heart condition. Missing out on God, disobeying God. It's like talking to him, but he doesn't understand. And the only thing that he brings up is his hurt, is hurt, frustration, is hurt. You see? He's just, this is going through his mind like, a, like in my days, like an old tape, right? Tape player. For most of you, you don't remember a tape player, but like it was stuck, like just repeat, 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 right? So, so he, he was caught with his um, mind story, or he, he was caught with his hurt, and he missed out this great mission and his great calling. So you, you don't want to let heart issue rule your life, Right? You don't want to see life issue take control of your life and, and focus on that to the point that you miss out on what God is saying and God wants to do. Like I said, we all have a calling and what can throw you off course, what can make you lose time is when you, um, let, when you let offenses take root in your heart. And the reality is that we deal with offenses all the time. All the time, right? All of us, every day, we have a possibility of absorbing offenses. It might be a word. It might be a body language. It might be something that you expect someone to do for you that's not done. And there's so many different streams that you can be offended. And when you let offenses let in in your heart, it will affect your destination. If I let it sit in my heart, if I let it take root in my heart, it will, it will influence my calling. It will influence also what I'm going to do in life. So I don't want to see my life offenses speak louder than God's voice. I want to see God bring a breakthrough in my life. Amen? Another heart condition that Jonah had or what caused him to harden his heart, it was because of, uh, well, what caused him to, to harden his heart is because he didn't trust in God. But what was the fruit of it is that it stole his joy. It stole his joy. He lost his joy. Even though he experienced such a great awakening. Imagine, put yourself in Jonah's sandal for a moment. You go in in the city of Nineveh and you're white as snow. You get in in town. And then you, you don't really want them to repent, but you speak the message of the Lord because you were swallowed by the fish, and you know, you know that God is watching over you. So, so he says, if God can swallow me by a fish, well, I might as well go all out, right? So he goes to the city, he starts to preach the word that God gave him, and the people are repenting. And people are, are taking ash and, and throwing it in the air and, and just going before the Lord and repenting of their sin, and he's, he's floored to see that happen. In a normal context, let's say if he would have been uh, healed in his heart, he would have went back to Israel with a dance. Whoa, guess what? I went to Nineveh. I didn't want to go. I ran away from the Lord, but I went, and, and I went to, to the city, and I spoke the word of the Lord, and the king repented. Uh, his servants repented. The whole population repented. They were all on their knees asking forgiveness. It was such an event. It was awesome to see God work through my life. Wow, right? That should have been the normal response. But what he does after he sees his great awakening, he goes on a hill, and he's upset, and he's discouraged, and he's, he's bummed out. You know, he's miserable, and it's, it's because he, he had a heart issue. It makes me think about the prodigal son story, right? Well, the prodigal son comes back home. And we know that the prodigal son, when he came back home, he, he had taken his, he had spent the money of his father and he, and he went wild uh, and, and he lived his life contrary to the ways of his father. And he came back home because he was hungry. That's why he came back home. But the father was there with open arms, right, waiting for him. And the reason why he broke and the reason why he repented, it was because of the love of the father. He didn't come before God with repentance. Really, he came because he was hungry. But when the love of the Father took a hold of him, he started to melt. And he knew that he didn't deserve it, right? And he, and he saw his father love on him, put a ring to his finger, sandals to his feet, a coat on his back. And the Father rejoices, rejoiced over him. He was just, just in awe of God's love. And this is how God is, right? But you have the older brother that is saying, well, why, why are you killing the calf for, for brother that ran away and, and did all this and now he's returning because he's hungry? Why? 
He, 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 had, he, he was upset. He, he, he had a heart condition, you see? He had a heart condition. And because of his heart condition, he was not able to love his brother. The normal, the normal uh, a heel heart was, would have been, brother, I'm so happy to see you. You were lost, now you're found. But it was not what he did because he had a heart condition. So you, you look at Jonah, he had a heart condition. It stole away his joy. I, I gotta ask you, what's your level of joy in your life right now? If you would have a thermometer, it would be, where would be your joy? If you have little joy, it's because you have a heart condition. God wants to heal your heart. God wants to restore your heart. God has a plan for you. God has, um, God has a path for you, like we said last week. But what, will, what can throw you off course is when you have a heart condition. And um, I, I like what it says in, in, in Jonah chapter 4, verse 11. It talks about God's heart. It says, but Nineveh has more than 120,000 people living in spiritual darkness, not to mention all the animals. Should I feel sorry for such a great city? What God is doing here is justifying his action to Jonah because Jonah doesn't get it. But you see the heart of Father God, and I believe that God wants us to have the same heart, right? He wants us to walk in freedom. Can you tell your neighbor that God wants you to walk in freedom? My prayer this morning is that you would experience freedom in your heart. That you would not let the issues of your heart dictate your life. That you would address the issues of your heart. That you would not continue to live your life caught up with heart issues year after years, even decade after decades, and miss out on what God has in store. And, and, and Jonah gives us this example of a man that I had a heart issue and, took, and that heart issue took control of his life. And the, the beauty with the gospel is that we can experience freedom. The beauty with the gospel is this morning there can be a turnaround in your life. You really can experience a turnaround in your heart if you want this morning. I believe that the sudden wonders accompany the preaching of his word. I believe this is the word of God for you this morning. And I believe that God wants to bring this alive in you and bring freedom in your heart. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what, what is your heart condition. But I know one thing is it might be relationally. It might be in your marriage. Maybe you're, you're, you're a young married. Don't build the walls up. Don't, be, don't build fences between you and your wife. Deal with it. Don't let heart issues grow up, grow up to a point where you, you, lose, you lose yourself. Because when you lose yourself, you stop being, uh, you stop being what you're, you're stop being you. And when you stop being you, then you're, you're, you're not you. And if that's the case, then, you know, you're off course. There's a lot of you here, eh, in my, in my, in my phrase. But I just invite you to ask the Lord to bring freedom in your heart. You know, how, how do I experience freedom? How do I experience, experience freedom? Well, I, I need to be honest with myself. I, I need to stop looking at people, and I've got to do a self-examination inventory and say, God, uh, I, I want to be free because I see this come over and over again, and it's influence, influencing my behavior. I want to show love, and I can't. I, I want to do good, but I just can't because I've got heart issues. So I want to see that melt down. I want to experience freedom at that level. Ask God to show you. And I believe that when you do that, the level of joy will increase in your heart when you acknowledge, when you see your need, and you ask God for help. I, I really believe that when you ask God to forgive, your sins, when you come before him and you say, God, forgive, forgive me of, of hosting hurts. Forgive me, uh, forgive me of, uh, of hardening my heart, whatever it might be. God, I, I give this to you. I believe that you will experience freedom. When you come clean and you confess and you repent, you say, God, I, I'm coming clean. I don't want this anymore. I, I want to experience freedom. Like it says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, one of the greatest verse, if you confess your sin, He's faithful and just to forgive him. He's able to break the chain of the influence of sin in your life if you're willing to be honest. You say, God, I need you, you know? And also when you learn to forgive others and you say, God, I'm gonna let go. I'm gonna let go of the hurts that were done to me. I'm gonna let go. I'm not gonna keep record anymore. I'm letting it go. I'm letting it go. And I think that's a huge step when you decide to do that. And then you ask God to heal your heart. Heal my heart, Lord. And I believe he's gonna come and heal your heart because that's what he does so well and that's what he wants to do because he wants you to be free. And lastly, 
It's to start to bless other people and not to judge people, to bless people, and it's to bring your thoughts captive in Jesus. Just to wrap up what I wanted to share, what was in my heart, I believe that we're all called by God. I believe that we all have things that God has in store for us. But if I let offense take root in my heart, it can throw me off course like it did with Jonah. So whatever it might be in your marriage, in your calling, in life, in your business, in the marketplace, make sure that you don't let offenses become your driver, the driver of your life. Make sure that it doesn't control your life. Bring it to God, experience freedom, and see that you'll become who you are, which we're planned to be, who you were made to be. Amen? I can invite you to close your eyes. I just wanted to lead you in a prayer. Father God, I thank you so much that there's forgiveness in you, that we can be forgiven, that we can come to you and experience forgiveness. I thank you, Father, that there's no condemnation in you when we come to you with a sincere heart, with repentance, and, and uh, with confession, that you forgive our sins and you wash our sins away, and that we are not under that control anymore. We're not under the control of sin. Father, I thank you for your forgiveness. And I just pray, Father, that all of us, we would realize that you have open arms and you want to forgive us. And secondly, Father, I, I think about Jonah that run away, ran away from you and, and was not able to take a hold of your heart or to have your heart for Nineveh. Lord, when it comes to my wife, my kids, the people around me, Lord, I, I don't want to have that. When it comes to this community, this region, I, I don't want to ball, I don't want to build walls of resentment and unforgiveness and say, I tried it out no more and focus on my hurt. I don't want to be controlled by my hurts, Father. You see how it's easy for me to be offended? Father, I just pray that you might give me the strength that you would inspire me not to take offense and not to let the things of life just take a hold of my heart and, and pilot my life. I, I don't want to see anything in life pilot me except you. I want to come under your Lordship. I want to come under you, Father. I thank you that you've um, you gave me a way out this morning. I have a way out this morning. It's to come to you and, and surrender and, and ask you to come and, and take, uh, take lordship and rule and invade my life. Father, you see each person here. You see each struggle. You see each challenge. And I know that all of us, we all have challenges before us. But my prayer, Father, is that we would not harden our hearts that we would not harden our hearts. So Father, we come to you, we give you our hearts. We give you our hearts. I give you my heart. Come and heal me, come and restore me. Come and make me well. Father, the people that have offended me, the people that have hurt me, I wanna let them go. Bless them, Lord. Be with them, I wanna be free. I want to be free so I can be what you've called me to be. That I would be a great husband, a great, uh, a great father, a great pastor, a, a great citizen, a great brother. Father, come and shape me and make me. And I surrender to you this, this morning. If you're here this morning for the first time or if you've been coming for a while and you've done like Jonah, you have run away from God. You're totally going in the opposite direction. I believe that you're not here by accident. I believe God is speaking to you and has spoken to you. May you turn around this morning. May you turn around. May you come to God. May you surrender to God. Stop fighting because this, you're, there's no joy in your heart because there's a battle going on, this extension of God's voice and your pride. And, and God is saying, give me your pride. Give it and I'll, I'll touch you. I'll move you. I'll... I'll fill you with my love. It's going to be amazing. So that's you this morning. I invite you to raise up your hand. Don't resist. Hey, we're all in the same boat. We all need God. But I don't want you to leave here missing out on the love of God. Thank you, brother. Thank you for your honesty. Someone here. Someone else. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else. Yeah. In the back. Thank you. Thank you. Someone else. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord. We return to you. We return to you. We, we are like this prodigal son running to you. Forgive our sins. Wash our sins, God. Sorry for my rebellion. Sorry for my hard heart, my pride. I receive your love. Take me in your arms and love on me, God. I need your love. I accept you in my life. I recommit my life to you. Here I am. I, I want your ring. I, I want your coat. I want your sandal. I want to be part of this house. I want to be in you. I want to be found in you. So Holy Spirit, come and fill me up of your spirit. Come and move upon me. Come, Lord, change my life around. I can't do it on my own. I need you in my life. And maybe you're here this morning and, you know, you got some hurts going on. You got some heart issues. I believe that God can heal you this morning or, or lead you on this path of healing. And that's you. I just want to give you a moment just to whisper and talk to the Lord and give it to God. I, I just have in my spirit, in my heart right now, this voice. There's some people that you, um, there, there's for sure someone here, I, I believe, that um, you experience failure. And you think everybody's looking at you with eyes of judgment, thinking they see you as a failure. It's not true. It's a lie of the enemy wanting you to believe that you're a failure. You're not a failure. And just pray for a freedom in your heart this morning. So I just invite you just to, just to surrender to the Lord, just to take a moment just to give it to Him. Lord. Amen. Freedom is so good. You know, freedom is what we're called to experience. God never wanted us to, to live with uh, a, crowd, a crowded heart. Like he wants you to be free. And may you fulfill your race. May you run in with God. May you uh, run to your wife, to your kids, to your husband. May you love. May you take a step of faith and do what you've never done before in the name of God. May you break that bondage. May you, may you walk in freedom. Amen? I would ask you to stand.
What a great promise, right? That is the Lord in the storm. You're not alone. May you walk in freedom. May you choose freedom. Amen. Bless you. Have a great week. And just to let you know that we have a prayer room in the back. We want to pray for you. They'll leave here. If you need prayer, we want to take the time to pray for you. If not, well, blessings. Thank you so much for coming.